Today we have Alan Beckerman, the CEO of IQ, a Toronto-based restaurant company with a focus on healthy and sustainable foods. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Let's start with an easy question. Tell us about how IQ came to be. I went on like the obligatory travel the world with a backpack and your friends trip right on. Uh, post, uh, post university and um, I think that's where the seeds were planted. We were in Europe and Asia for about three months and I was a group with a group of three other guys and there was always the one that wanted to go check out the best club and one that wanted to check out art, art galleries and I was always interested in scoping out local coffee shops, cafes, because I think that's where like the real pulse of a, mm -hmm. of a society is. And whether it was Shanghai or Stockholm or whatnot, I was always seeking out those spots. And every city that we visited, I, like the, the takeaway was always the same, man, I wish we had something like this in Toronto. Fast forward, I came back home. First job out of school was in private equity, actually. So the furthest thing from hospitality. Wow. Okay. Um, and three weeks into my job, I came to my boss and I said, we see so much amazing entrepreneurial talent. Don't you ever get the itch to do it yourself? And I'm like 22 at the time, maybe. And he said, yeah, you know, I think about it sometimes, but what we do is a lot easier. And I think that's like the worst answer you can give <laughs> an ambitious 22-year-old mm -hmm. kid. So from that point on, I knew, okay, I, I need to do something on my own. At some point, I just don't know what it is. And, and like most ideas, mine was born out of a, a sense of personal frustration. I was living a pretty healthy life at the time, and there was nowhere to get like a proper meal that was clean right. and healthy and of the same quality that I was making for myself at home. So I thought, you know, somebody should do this. And then, you know, it's like, why don't I give it a shot? So it was, that's kind of how it all came to be. Awesome. So tell us what makes IQ unique. So we operate much more like a traditional restaurant than a typical fast casual restaurant company. Our menu changes every three months or a large portion of it, of it does. Over 50% of what we buy uh, comes from within 100 kilometers. Uh, and everything's made on site every single day. Um, that's the key piece, but I think beyond that is the restaurant business has been tra traditionally low tech um, and pretty uh, old school in the way that, that things work. So for us, what really gives us our identity is, is being comfortable with the fringes and not necessarily being afraid to make the decisions that we think are gonna reshape the, the future of the industry. Got it. So beyond, beyond what you do every day, tell me how, how do you make health and wellness an integral part of the, of the business and your team? I mean, for us, it's, it's all about reinforcing core values. So mm -hmm. we have six core values, I'm not gonna ring them off, but uh, we spend a ton of time um, hosting leadership events for our current and future leaders at the company and bringing them together every three, four, five weeks, uh, whether it's for one hour or five hours on a Tuesday morning or a Saturday afternoon at like randomly curated events that we put together that focus around those core values, whether they have, whether they're super uh, literal, like a boot camp or a yoga class that we put on together for them or uh, taking them out to visit a farm that we purchased from. But those, those activities that we, that we host always culminate with, um, with something to, that has to do with, with health. So for a business that's not, you know, super high tech, you've made the decision to go cashless, which for retail and restaurants is pretty high tech. Yeah. Tell us a bit about how you made that decision. Uh, I think it actually had two parts. The first was kind of going back to what I said before, just not, not being afraid to make the decisions mm -hmm. that we think are going are gonna to shape the future of the industry. Uh, but the second piece was, was data driven. We looked at the data and less than 15% of our guests were using cash. Uh, to pay for their meals at IQ, and I thought, okay, well, I don't know what's in their wallet, but if I had to guess, 99.9% .9 of those folks that are paying with cash have some form of plastic right. um, or digital option to pay, and, and so cash is very, um, you know, creates a ton of friction for us. Mm -hmm. We, are, when we were accepting it, our managers, our highest paid staff, were spending three hours, three four hours a day counting cash, reconciling walking bags of money to the bank. Right. It sounds kind of ridiculous, right. but we thought, okay, well, can, if we removed it, what would happen to the experience? Would it be uh, the same or would we actually elevate it? And we thought we could actually elevate the guest experience by, by removing that piece. So that's, that's how it came to be. 
So your old boss said uh, what you were doing at private equity, well, that's easy. Right. Now you've had a taste of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. What have you learned most being an entrepreneur? Well, he was right. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is easier as, in terms of what I've learned, I think. Uh, you can't over, overstate the importance of culture, building a culture at a company from a very, very early stage because it's hard to just wake up three, four, five years in and say, okay, we're going to be this kind of company. Right. Um, so that's been my biggest lesson by far, is just the importance of culture and framing all the decisions you make around, around your culture. Awesome. I agree with that. And uh, another thing that I agree about is this whole idea about going global. And you've got that ambition. Yeah. What's it going to take for you to go global? Um, I think for us, uh, we really only, we, we're looking to expand to markets where we can create a sense of community um, and not just plant a flag as a Canadian company and assume that everything will, will be great. So uh, markets where we can create a sense of community and we have super strong partners on the ground that, um, that can build a company that's going to be around not only for 5, 10, but hopefully 20, 30 years. So you've had a pretty amazing run up until now, and now you're thinking about you know, where you go next. What's it going to take for you to take this business to the next level? There was an article I read recently about uh, some of Uber's competition in Japan and how they were focusing on tiny, tiny, tiny towns instead of the mega cities. And uh, someone quoted a proverb that said, uh, the, the, the fastest path to your goal is usually the longest road. And I think when you're starting a business, you want everything to happen immediately. Right. Uh, and what we've learned is that if we just took like an extra second in mapping out our future, we probably would have gotten to our to our end goals a lot faster. So what is it going to take to get to the next level? Just like uh, patience and, and a little bit more exactness in, uh, in planning our path forward. I love it. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. My pleasure, man.